To say that Activision Blizzard has been facing legal troubles would be an understatement. They've been facing lawsuits on all fronts after the DFEH, which is one of the government entities suing Activision Blizzard, exposed a culture of harassment, abuse, discrimination, misconduct, you name it, that has led employees organizing and issuing the following demands right here as listed on the A Better Activision Blizzard King Twitter page, which is where a lot of the organizing employees are expressing their sentiments and their ongoing protest against executives who refuse to capitulate to employees' demands. And in response, you know, Activision Blizzard has done things like hiring Wilmer Hale under the guise of being an entity that's there to protect employees when it is, in fact, a union-busting firm. So the DFEH is certainly the big entity that Activision Blizzard is dealing with as far as lawsuits go, but employees are also issuing their own strikes and movements against them. And then the DFEH recently actually expanded their lawsuit because turns out Activision Blizzard has been shredding documents and destroying evidence in a legal fashion as any innocent company does beyond that shareholders have issued their lawsuits against activision blizzard for withholding harassment information feeling as though they were misled they wouldn't have invested in the company if they'd known everything that was going on etc employees more recently issued their own complaints through a partnership with the CWA, which is one of the biggest unions in America, as reports indicate that, according to the CWA, instead of responding to employees' demands, Activision Blizzard management is using coercive tactics. And you can see right here on the official National Labor Relations Board, the official documents, and it is stated here how the charging party is this legal firm alongside the CWA and the charge party is Activision Blizzard. The complaint stipulates that coercive tactics have been employed by the company to prevent employees from organizing for a workplace free of abuse. And employees organizing is indeed something that is protected under federal labor laws. And that's what Activision Blizzard is trying to mitigate. And the company apparently allegedly threatened employees that they cannot talk about or communicate about wages hours and working conditions, cannot communicate with or discuss ongoing investigations of wages, hours and working conditions. Employees are being surveilled and asked questions uh, about their organizing. They've clearly been cracking down in a way that shows that while publicly they talk all about how important it is to treat their employees correctly and foster a work environment that is safe, internally, they're just going full damage control at the expense of employees. So the NLRB is another government entity that Activision Blizzard is dealing with as far as lawsuits go via complaints issued by the CWA and Activision Blizzard employees. And back to investors, the SEC is investigating Activision Blizzard over workplace practices and disclosures. Mainly, they represent investors. And as a part of that process, Bobby Kotick has been subpoenaed by the courts. And beyond that, there is this nationally ranked shareholder rights firm, Labaton Suchero, that is investigating Activision Blizzard for potential securities violations and breach of fiduciary duty. So this situation has snowballed quite a bit. Now, one other lawsuit that I haven't yet talked about is one issued by the EEOC, which stands for the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. It's another US government organization. And this was a lawsuit that was filed on September 27th, 2021. So just three days ago, as of the recording of this this video and we didn't hear much about it but this is one of the lawsuits that has actually settled very quickly and in a way that isn't satisfactory for Activision Blizzard employees. Now, as for what the complaints issued by the EEOC were, as noted here and summarized by Kotaku, it notified Activision Blizzard of its findings on June 15th, but it turns out it began its investigation all the way back in September of 2018. What followed were extensive conciliation discussions with Activision, but the EEOC wasn't able to secure any sort of acceptable conciliation agreement through these more informal methods, whatever all that means. So now it's suing and is seeking a jury trial over the allegations uncovered during its investigation. Sounds pretty grave until you look at recent news of how this situation has been settled, how Activision Blizzard basically threw a bit of money and the EEOC said, 
Yep, okay, good enough for me. So, Callan Browning here from the New York Times reported, here is the story soon after a federal agency accused Activision of sexual harassment and discrimination, the EEOC, and sought a jury trial. The company said it would settle for $18 million. This settlement does not affect a separate lawsuit in California. So that's definitely one important thing to note. While the EEOC lawsuit's results were crappy to say the least, there are plenty of other lawsuits that are still ongoing and seem to be much more serious about holding Activision Blizzard and its executives accountable. Activision Blizzard is far from being in the clear, but this settlement shows exactly the kind of company this is and how they're choosing to handle this situation instead of meeting with employees and, you know, taking their demands seriously. They're just trying to take the easy way out as much as they can. Activision Blizzard issued a statement on this settlement, which reads as follows. Activision Blizzard is part of its effort to have the most welcoming, inclusive workplace. The executives didn't care until they got caught neglecting the issue. The company has reached an agreement with the U.S. Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, EOC, to settle claims and to further strengthen policies and programs to prevent harassment and discrimination in the company's workplace. Activision Blizzard has committed to create an $18 million fund to compensate and make amends to eligible claimants. Any amounts not used for claimants will be divided between charities that advance women in the video game industry or promote awareness around harassment and gender equality issues, as well as company diversity, equity, and inclusion initiatives as approved by the EEOC. Now, given Activision Blizzard is a multi-billion dollar corporation, $18 million dollars is pocket change for them. This is not some major gesture on the part of Activision Blizzard. Again, they're all about taking the easy way out and uh, upholding as little accountability as possible. The statement also gloated how Activision Blizzard announced an initiative to develop software tools and training programs to improve workplace policies and practices for employers across the technology industry. And additional initiatives that they kept emphasizing are bullet listed here, which include upgrading policies, practices, and training to further prevent and eliminate harassment and discrimination in its workplace, including implementing an expanded performance review system with a new equal opportunity focus and providing ongoing going oversight and review of the company's training programs, investigation policies, disciplinary framework, and compliance by appointing a third-party equal opportunity consultant whose findings will be regularly reported to our board of directors as well as the commission. The company continues to implement, you know, changes and policies and whatever on their own terms, but have yet to actually consider the demands listed here by a better ABK's official Twitter page, demands that include an end to mandatory arbitration clauses, the adoption of recruiting, interviewing, hiring, and promotion policies designed to improve representation among employees at all levels, agreed upon by employees in a company-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion organization, publication of data on relative compensation, basically more transparency on salaries to mitigate the possibility and potential of wage disparities, which is a common issue within the company. And finally, empower company-wide diversity, equity, and inclusion task force to hire a third party to audit ABK's reporting structure, HR department, and executive staff. So hire entities approved by employees, not by the company, to audit the company and its leadership and serve as overwatch for a company that has gone unchecked for far too long. None of these things Activision Blizzard are keen on implementing. So all this talk about how Activision Blizzard is putting in their best foot forward to have the most welcoming, inclusive workplace, it means absolutely nothing. And it goes doubly true for CEO Bobby Kotick's statement that reads, there is no place anywhere at our company for discrimination, harassment, or unequal treatment of any kind. Well, there has been a place for all that for decades until all that was brought to the surface until y'all were caught. And I'm grateful to the employees who bravely shared their experiences, says the CEO who hired a union busting firm and uh, a company that has been engaging in coercive tactics to silence employees and mitigate organizing and striking and all that stuff. Yeah. Okay, Bobby, sure thing. I am sorry that anyone had to experience inappropriate conduct. Yeah, I'm sure you are. And I remain unwavering in my commitment to make Activision Blizzard one of the world's most inclusive, respected, and respectful workplaces, says the man desperate to save face. We will continue to be vigilant in our commitment to the elimination of harassment and discrimination in the workplace, says the CEO, ignoring all of the employees' demands. We thank the EEOC for its constructive engagement as we work to fulfill our commitments to eradicate inappropriate conduct in the workplace, which can be translated as we appreciate the EEOC just letting us throw a little bit of money 
at a problem and resolve it that way instead of people who deserve to face consequences actually being held accountable. Unsurprisingly, the CWA, the union partnering with Activision Blizzard employees, issued a response and they were definitely not pleased at all by this development. $18 million is a slap in the face to workers considering Activision Blizzard is worth $72 billion. $18 million is a fraction of a fraction of that money. And workers dealt with toxic working conditions for years. The CWA then pleads other government organizations engaging in lawsuits against Activision Blizzard to not capitulate as the EEOC did. The SEC, the NLRB, and the DFEH must choose to truly hold Activision Blizzard accountable on behalf of the company's 10,000 workers. And as I said before, those lawsuits are very much still going on. The EEOC letting Activision spend $18 million to stave off that specific lawsuit uh, doesn't mean much for all of the other stuff that Activision Blizzard's got going on and hopefully these three other organizations will see more sense. And then scrolling further down, here we have a more extensive statement from the CWA. It's time for real accountability for bad corporate actors. Workers deserve as much and so much more. Clicking on this image will reveal the full statement. Yesterday's insufficient EOC settlement made it clear that the thousands of Activision Blizzard workers who have suffered from years of toxic workplace misconduct on behalf of Activision Blizzard will not receive true justice. Activision Blizzard is worth $72 billion. An $18 million settlement is mere pennies considering the resources available to this cash-rich corporation, 100% on point with that bit. Even worse, Activision Blizzard's management does not acknowledge that their actions harm their workers, viewing the settlement as a very small price to pay to rid themselves of a distraction. Yeah, pretty much. And this statement also concludes by hoping that the SEC, the NLRB, and the DFEH will actually ensure that justice is served. And you can see that organizing employees are in full agreement, as noted here by how the A Better ABK Twitter page retweeted both of CWA's tweets in regards to recent unfortunate developments regarding how the EEOC ultimately settled this lawsuit. When reached out by New Sala Kotaku, an Activision Blizzard spokesperson said this, we agreed on $18 million with the EEOC, who is expert in this area. The EOC will make an independent assessment of each claim they receive. Any employee who believes they have been the subject of harassment or retaliation should contact the EOC. There will be multiple communications channels providing information on how to make a claim. We want the EOC to know about everyone who believes they've suffered harassment or retaliation. Yeah, when Activision Blizzard encourages employees to talk to a specific organization about their qualms surrounding the company, it's hard to take that seriously or it's hard to actually believe that Activision Blizzard has the best of intentions given that so far everything that's been happening internally suggests that it's all about damage control above all else above protecting employees. And given the EOC basically issued a slap to the wrist for Activision Blizzard despite the disgusting negligence and complacency to a workplace of harassment and discrimination, the EEOC is not looking like the most trustworthy of organizations right now. So this is definitely far from an ideal development. This is definitely one of the lost battles, but the war, if you will, is far from over. Again, there's so many organizations suing Activision Blizzard on behalf of workers, investors, you name it, and all of the bad PR that's been generated by this whole situation that uh, Activision Blizzard is still facing a lot of pressure and there's still plenty of opportunities for the company to face the consequences that it deserves to face. For the leaders in particular who have been, you know, ousting scapegoats like J. Allen Brack and the Diablo 4 director and Jesse McCree and whatnot, but have yet to actually ensure that Bobby Kotick you know, faces some consequences for his failed leadership, or Fran Townsend is fired for her asinine statements that basically dismiss the DFEH's allegations that have full-on been corroborated by tons of employees, both former and current. But yeah, we'll see how this situation continues to develop. Again, hopefully the other suing organizations won't go as easy on a corporation that's proven to be the heartless organization that many people have 
already known Activision Blizzard to be. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is one man's take on the latest developments surrounding Activision Blizzard. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on everything. And to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.